my turn to cut the grass too so it's great <laughs> stretch it to two weeks yeah so we see lots of sidewalks being fixed this week by the looks of it eh? So good evening, everyone. Um, we'd like to call this meeting to order. Would someone be willing to read the acknowledgement for the Treaty 6 territory? Sure. We acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place, and traveling route to the Cree, Saltu, Blackfoot, Métis, Diné, and Nakota Sioux. We acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. Thank you. Um, I understand we're missing a couple of counselors this evening. Uh, DAO Pat. Thank you, Mr. Mary. Uh, Councillor Campbell is away. Okay, and that's the only one. Um, so I haven't called this meeting to order. I would look for any additions, deletions, or changes to the agenda. None from administration, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you very much. So we move for uh, adopt the agenda. Would someone be willing to make that motion? I can make that motion, uh, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Deputy um, Mayor. Uh, I, Judy Schuler, make a motion. We adopt the agenda as presented. Thank you. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? I have heard none. We'll call for a vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 If I may, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of my last meetings that we were at, they did the reverse, just asked if anybody opposed, and we were all okay. on Zoom. Was it might have been a little bit easier? Sure, we'll do that with the next uh, motion. Great idea, thank you. Um, yeah. So we have a proclamation 5.1 Prostate Cancer Awareness Month proclamation. I'll just read that out now. Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, whereas prostate cancer is the most common cancer to affect Canadian men. And whereas one in seven Canadian men will be diagnosed with this disease in his lifetime, and whereas an estimated 4,100 Canadian men will die from prostate, prostate cancer this year, and whereas the survival rate for prostate cancer can be over 90% when detected early, and whereas Prostate Cancer Canada recommends that men get a PSA test when they're in their 40s to establish their baseline. Therefore, on behalf of our council, I, Carl Hulk Mayor, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2020 to be Prostate Cancer Awareness Month in the town of Bruderheim. Now I'll sign and date this and bring it back to the town office. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Um, adopting the minutes. We're looking for a motion to adopt the minutes of July 8th. someone be willing to make that motion? I'll make that motion. I move that we adopt the minutes July 8, 2020 regular meeting of council. Thank you. Is anyone opposed to that motion? Okay, uh, having heard none opposed, then all are in favor and the motion is carried 6.1. Uh, council priorities, uh, information requests. We'll start with uh, Deputy Mayor Judy. Uh, I have nothing, thanks. Okay, uh, Councillor Wayne. Uh, just one question. Um, just regards to taxes, is there a difference tax rate for modular homes versus stick built homes, I guess, or homes? Does that make sense? No? Mr. Mayor, we only have one tax rate in Bruderhood. But so there's, okay, that was the question because there's some questions whether there's a different um, rate, I guess, or supposed to be a different rate for modular homes or. That wasn't. I don't uh, know what Mr. Mayor, through to Councillor Leco, I'll double check on that, but maybe tax rate's not what they're asking for. Maybe that's the assessment or something. I'll double check if there's. Yeah, I'm not. If they're assessed or, but there's only one tax rate, but there. Could maybe be. they're assessed. Yeah, maybe they're assessed different then. Yeah, I will double check on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that, Council Councillor Wayne. Any other questions? Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Okay, uh, Councillor Dan. None for me, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Len. Does Councillor Len have any information requests? I'm mute.
We're having some technical. Yeah, well, there we're fine. Are we good? Yep, we can hear you now. Okay. If you've been watching the news in the late last while, things are going not very good for us. Uh, the school budget's going to go crazy. He's uh, cutting all the environmental, cutting the education. 98% of the doctors are opposed to it. Uh, and the latest one is, of course, <clears throat> it's going to affect all the small communities. And I suppose the bigger communities just as much. His latest one of giving more money, he says, feed the golden goose. I don't understand that one because we are the taxpayers of his golden goose, not the oil companies. Anyways, I think we should formulate a plan. I think we should take the leadership role in it, in this area. We have to set down a plan for forward to this government to stop the silliness. It's uh, we can't afford it. This time next year, we'll be absolutely broke with policing. Those costs, we can't have raised those taxes like that. So it'd be just ridiculous. So I think we as a council <clears throat> should take the uh, directive to uh, contact the other surrounding communities and counties around us and put a plan together to present to the government. Thank you for that, Councillor Lynn. Um, is there any possibility that we could set up a meeting with our uh, MLA, would that be something that our CAO? No, uh, she's she she would be a waste of time. She'd be she doesn't have the uh, the stick. We need a whole bunch of people in the taxpayers, somewhat revolting. Uh, it's, it's happening around the world right now. Taxpayers are not happy, and I think it's about time we show the same thing. Mr. Mayor, if I can interrupt. Yep. EMA is, uh, is on a call on Friday where they were discussing uh, the assessment model and how that's going to look. Uh, they're going to be preparing a template that they're asking uh, municipalities to send in and for council to uh, endorse that uh, asking the government to take another look at some other options. Did council want to wait for that template to see if that's satisfied or a different direction? I'm just saying that's what's coming here in the next week or so. Well, that's coming in a week. And then could that be part of our uh, strategy session to talk about that? Absolutely, if that comes in time, absolutely we could. Would that, would that be something that we could start with, uh, Councillor Len? Yes, I, I have no problem, but I think we have to really be serious as councillors to protect our counties and protect our citizens. And we have to find out exactly which direction they're taking so we can combat it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Len. Um, Councillor Pat, are you on board here? I think so. Am I? I can barely hear you. I'm on board. Do you have any you information requests? Uh, yes, I do. Okay. Yep, that's uh, good now. Okay, the first one, uh, the address signage on Queen Street on the businesses, there's still a number that uh, don't have their address on the outside of their buildings. Uh, is there any chance that maybe a friendly reminder, in case of an emergency, there's a number to go to? Is that something you can address the CAO Pat? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'll check into that. Thank you. Uh, anything else, Councillor Pat? Uh, also, I just uh, want, uh, want a heads up, or let you have a heads up that they've got the outdoor indigenous learning space in front of the school. Uh, it's really, really cool looking. And um, that was grant money, I believe from, I almost want to say Shell uh to get that in place so uh hope i'm looking forward to being well used and uh it it looks it looks really good great thank you very much anything okay. else Councillor pat uh that was it thanks okay um have i missed anybody in uh council or information requests okay um open it up to program requests um We'll go in reverse order. Councillor Pat, do you have any program requests? Nope, not at this time. Okay, thank you. Councillor Len? No, not at this time either. Okay, Councillor Dan? 
Uh, not today, thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Wayne. Um, just something quickly, I guess, as we go forward is um, pending any, um, uh, I guess, uh, direction from the government, are we still on in line to put ice into the arena at the same time as previous years? Mr. Mayor, through Councillor Aleko, yes, we are. Perfect, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Wayne. Anything else? Not hearing anything, okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Judy? Uh, I have nothing, thanks. Okay, um, I have uh, one question. Um, through this COVID uh, summer and year so far, how is our FCS uh, S working out? Uh, it seems to be rather a virtual affair. Is is there is there any feedback from administration on how that's working for our community? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think Lamont County FCS is doing an amazing job at providing virtual opportunities. We are finding when we tried on our website, we were able to uh, track hits. Uh, we weren't getting a lot of take up on opportunities provided through us. I have asked that Lamont County provide the numbers of people that are partaking in their activities, but they've done an amazing job at trying to go virtual and to provide opportunities. So whether or not our community is taking them up on that, um, we'll get some statistics, I guess, after the summer and when they've done their programming. Okay, thank you. And, if uh, I might. Go ahead. If I might, I'm part of the F -F -F <laughs> FCSS committee. Um, I can also shed a little bit of light as to what they've been up to. Um, they've been doing some other things like their uh, Meals in Motion, for example. They sent out, uh, we had this meeting in July. At the time, they had sent out over 700 meals. So that's uh, doing very, very well. There's a few, the towns are doing a few things here and there in and around the county. Um, Mundare, I believe, just did a pierogi dinner, I want to say. They're all individually packed. You go in, get it, take it out. So there are things going on. Um, it's, it's limited due to COVID, though. So they're doing the best they can. Like Patty said, they're online. They're doing the best they can. They have daily activities that uh, you can tune in, check it out. Um, and then there's also... If you need help, you can reach out to them. That again, it's it's unfortunately limited. So, but yeah, hope that helps. Thank you, Councillor Dan. Anything further, CA Pat, about that question? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, we're good. Okay, um, just following up on Councillor Wayne's question about the hockey, um, has it been uh, determined how uh, the uh, events will be transpiring at the arena, like with the format and how, how it's just going to run. You know what I mean? Like our, our hockey team is going to have to come fully dressed or do we have a game plan? So Mr. Mayor, uh, some of the larger municipalities had summer ice in and uh, we're really fortunate that they're actually sharing what worked, what didn't work, what doesn't work, definitely across the board is that uh, asking teams to do cleaning or extra stuff did not work at all. Um, they had no take up on that. So whatever we do to satisfy the guidelines put on by Alberta Health Services, we're gonna be responsible for doing. So um, we just gathered some more information today from our friends to the East, Spruce Grove, Stony Plain, uh, Vegreville sent some stuff over. Uh, of course, our friends in the fort in Strathcona and uh, we are waiting for minor hockey because I'm sure they will be having their own rules. Uh, it's easier to manage the adult portion of it than it is the youth portion, obviously. Uh, maybe uh, Councillor Leko can shed some light how close we are to getting some news from minor sports. Um, we have a, um, a league meeting um, September 12th, uh, the AGM, and I think there'll be more information brought out then. Um, minor sports has a meeting the end of the at the end of August um, so hopefully between those two meetings we should have some understanding as to where things are going and once I hear back I will fire it off to everybody so you know what's going on okay thank you very much um, being as uh, we're into the second half of August and September's not far away I'm just uh, 
it'd be great to uh, be well prepared for whatever it is that we're going to have for a game plan. So thank you for that. Um, if there's no other program requests, we'll move on to the request for decisions. Okay. Um, quarterly management report 8.1. CAO Pat. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll ask our Director of Finance to present this. The purpose of the report is to provide Council with the management report, which includes the financial status report as of June 30th, 2020. The recommendation is that Town Council accepts the management report and the second quarter financial report as information. Council history on July 8th, Council accepted the first quarter report as information. Administration reviewed the financial results as of June 30th and is providing council with a status report. Operations are on track with revenue amounts of 2,197,547 to June 30th and expenses of 1,182,670. Approved capital projects total 524,000 and projects that have been paid to June 30th total 115,477 with a budget amount remaining of 408,523. As of June 30th, the, the town bank account balance is 1,536,182, which includes 881,813 of reserves. The revolving line of credit in the amount of 350,000 has an available balance of 350,000. Long-term debt debentures are held on the wheel loader, the fire hall, and the 2017 street improvement program. Total repayment in 2020 is 102,870. This debt agrees with the principle of ensuring future residents pay their share and it is for critical service assets. There's enclosed income statement, department variance report, capital budget variance report, and statement of reserves. Okay, thank you for that. I'll be looking for a motion from the council to accept the management report. I can't hear. Are you ready to hear it now? At the top. Yeah. You're still muted, Patty. Somebody, you go. okay, how's that? There you go, that's perfect. Okay, uh, the town council accepts the management report and the second quarter financial update as information. Thank you for that motion. Is mm -hmm. there any questions from council? I have a question, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Deputy Mayor. So I just skimmed over it, but I'm looking at my employee benefits and they're 265,793. As at the end of March 31st, they're only 32,000. So where is the big jump there compared to the wages? I'll have to look into that one and get back to you. So we will get an email response? Correct. Okay. Uh, any other questions from council? Um, I, I have a few questions. Um, going through the uh, variance report, um, was it page three, I guess it would be, or yeah, page four? One, two, three, page four, the 2020 Q2 variance report by department. Um, can you just kind of walk us through, uh, you don't have to do it on every one, but like the one for legislative services, it says a negative number and just wondering uh, how we're supposed to read this. So just so that everybody's aware on this information or how we're, how we're uh, to interpret it. Okay, so if we look at legislative services, the negative number is your revenue. So that's the amount of money that was brought in in the first column and the amount of money that was budgeted to bring in in the second column. And then the one right underneath that with the 41,282 is that, um, to June 30th actual expenses. 
And then beside that with the 85,000 is the budgeted expenses. And then the number underneath that is the difference of the two. So by the end of the year, it's going to be back to a, a zero or a positive number, or is it going to remain in a negative? Just trying to figure out how that balances out. Well, your revenue will always be a negative number. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're referring to? Or are you referring to the year to date variance? Yeah, like the year to date variance is, is that can it, um, uh, like, is there supposed to be money coming in to get it out of the negative or, um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, apologize for maybe a little bit uh, sideways kind of question, just trying to make sure we all understand the information that we're seeing here. Okay, so on the first row, the $250, that's more money than we planned on bringing in. So the that's- 2050, you mean? No, the two, $250. Okay. If you look at the last column permanent variance, that 250 is there. We didn't yep. budget for that money. That was extra money we brought in. And then sure. on the expenditures, um, the 44,372 under year to date variance, that is the difference between what we budgeted and what we spent to date. So we hmm. still have the 44,372 to spend. Yes, that's what I was. Okay, so that's how we're supposed to read all of these. And that's right. They, they should all uh, total up at the end of it. And then and if they don't, then there's something that's gone amiss with uh, the forecasting. Is that is that right? Uh, not necessarily. It might mean that we've brought in more money than we anticipated or that we budgeted for. Um, mm -hmm. It could mean that we had an expense that came up that we didn't budget for. Okay. And so my next question is, now that we're a good ways through the year with this COVID, how has that impacted the variances by department? Because obviously there's some revenues we probably didn't bring in then, right? Like for example, the community hall, there's been no events there. Uh, I think I'm gonna get CAO Patty to respond to that one. So, Mr. Mayor, yes, absolutely. We have uh, seen some decline in some of our re revenue forecasting. Not a great deal, though. Uh, some of the ones you'll see is on the Infinity Center. We had a rent-free period there. We obviously have had no rentals at the arena, um, but not bad overall. Uh, we are going to do a report for council at the next meeting, September 2nd, just outlining exactly where we are with uh, extra expenses from COVID for cleaning, for modifications, loss of revenue. But mm -hmm. I would say pretty minimal. Uh, we have seen the campground, of course, you've seen that that's been full, uh, hoping that we can through to September so that we will actually have more revenue. When you're does looking that at fall under parks, Pat? Yes, it does. Um, when you're looking at departments like legislative services and admin, um, we have very little revenue that's expenses, which is what we get from taxes, right? So um, those, those, those areas are not gonna balance revenue to expenses if you're looking at that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So in the parks area for the campground, we could probably expect to see a higher number than last year, for example. Oh, absolutely, but we did drop it. Um, so we have forecasted 50,000, uh, 371 for all parks revenue. Um, so we're on, if we can keep the current rental, I did some forecasting, we should be up there about 20,000. If everybody's yes. at the end of, like till freeze up, right? But it, again, that's a crystal ball. Depends when they're done with their work. And, uh, but yeah, that's a definite good revenue. So if I was to guess, uh, I would say we'll be under 20,000 for effect from COVID loss, including, yeah. um, except for the arena, that's a whole nother game yeah. that that's going to be big but uh so far to date i would say that between loss of revenue modification cleaning supplies enhanced protection for staff and for visitors we would be under the twenty thousand. okay thank you uh does anybody else have any other questions on the variance report um any questions on the cap sorry i, I can't hear mr mayor if i could just add um, on the operating account, Dennis and me on the public works side, some of the things that we weren't able to do, uh, like the installation of meters, 
um, and some a few other projects like that. Uh, we've used the money in a different area, which we'll be reporting to council. So we've got some other projects done that were slated for next year. So we'll just be reversing. Uh, that would have been we'll be doing a lot of all that on the report on no operating still. Yeah, we're just replacing oh, so, what's there. Okay. So we'll yeah, be doing a to kind of give council, you know, some of those things that weren't able to be done because of the COVID. So. Right. Yeah. So in some respects, we might have uh, saved some money there. So with with the uh, changes in the taxes to help residents out, uh, have, have we seen a huge variance from last year, for example, or how are we doing in that regard? Sorry, Ms. Banner, I don't understand the question. So because we lowered the taxes, is that what you're saying? We no, because uh, folks now have until October oh. to pay instead of uh, the end of July if, if they chose to, right? Without a penalty. Yeah, I believe we brought in 54%, uh, sure. I think it was close to that. Yes. In our taxes. So we're okay till December, basically, right? Yeah, so it's still at 54%. Yeah, we didn't get anything. Maybe a little bit of a trickle since July, but uh, we're expecting the bulk of it to come in in September. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions on the capital items? Um, I have a question on the capital items under the water reservoir. Um, did that uh, grant come through for the engineering work I think we we're gonna use it for? Yes, Mr. Mayor, actually I, um, I was going to talk to council about that. I thought I put in the CA report. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Yeah, we just got the final signed off copy. So we got a double signed piece of paper and uh, $200,000 to do the engineering design of that. So great news. Right. And would we see any expenses happening this year from that? Absolutely. They're in full gear. We're hoping to get the full design done by year end. So we'll be able to apply for federal funding. By the end of this year? Yes, sir. Oh, well, that's great news. Thank you. Um, does anybody else have any more questions for the quarterly management report? Okay, uh, we'll call for a vote then of the nays. Is anyone opposed? None opposed, so we're all in favor and the motion's carried. Thank you. And now we move on to 8.2, uh, 2021 budget timeline. Mr. Mayor, I'll get our director of finance to do this one as well. Thank you. Um, sorry, I don't have that report with me. Oh, sorry, Mr. Mayor. No, we'll do, it. do we want to defer this to the next meeting then? Oh, I have it in front of me, Mr. Mayor, sorry. Um, this reports provide council with information about the 2021 budget timelines. We're recommending the town council approve the 2021 operating and capital budget timelines as presented. Annually, Council approves the budget timeline. Administration has set out dates for the 2021 budget process. Setting dates for the budget process allows administration to prepare the budget in a timely manner. Strategic areas, a community is educated on responsibilities and limitation of Council administration. Other impacts, MGA RSA 2000, Chapter M26, Section 242, Adoption of Operating Budget. And Mr. Mayor, we've enclosed the uh, dates for consideration. Right. So uh, we're looking for a motion to approve the budget timeline. Would someone be willing to make that motion? I'll make a motion that town council approve the 2021 operating and capital budget timelines as presented. Thank you for that, Councillor Wayne. Any questions on the motion? Um, I'm not hearing any. I have one question, I think. Um, we had talked before about um, having budget discussions and so forth. Uh, like in the past, we've had an hour before a regular scheduled council meeting and trying to decipher how this is working. Like it says, for example, October 7th, budget discussions closed session from 6 to 7 p.m. Is that in front of a regular council meeting or how is that working? Or is that a separate meeting? Uh, Mr. Mayor, sorry, I don't have the calendar in front of me. That sure. is a calendar. Is that a regular? Yeah. It's the first, uh, first Wednesday of October. 
Yeah, because because does that give council enough time to actually be able to discuss anything before a council meeting? So, Mr. Mayor, I'll be looking to put in a workshop between September 18th and October 7th. That wouldn't be a regular meeting of council. That would be a budget workshop. Okay, so there'll be a workshop scheduled in between those two dates. That's correct. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that council had enough time to fully be able to discuss because the hour is really not a lot of time, right? Okay, that was the only question that I had. And Mr. Mayor, just as a reminder, it is the interim budget, so. Yes. Yep, oh, I understand totally, yeah. So is there any other questions on that motion? Okay, haven't heard none. We'll call for a vote of the nays. Is there any opposed to this motion? Haven't heard none, then the motion is carried. Uh, uh, everyone's in favor. Moving on to 8.3 bylaw 12-2020. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this bylaw is to amend Land Use Bylaw 33 2015 to redistrict R1 low density residential district to C1 downtown commercial district. The town council give first reading to bylaw 12 2020, a bylaw to amend Land Use Bylaw 33 2015 to redistrict lot 8 and 9, block 3, plan 3753P from R1 low density residential district to C1 downtown commercial district. In 1990, the town of Ruderheim passed bylaw 9605, a bylaw to redistrict this property from R1 low density residential to C1 downtown commercial. There is a record of a subdivision development appeal hearing and the final decision to re redistrict the property to commercial downtown. In 2008, town council approved land use bylaw 788-2008, which repealed all previous bylaws and this piece of property was low density residential district. In 2015, Land Use Bylaw 788-2008 was repealed and Council approved Land Use Bylaw 33-2015, which includes this property as low density residential district. From 1990 through 2020, this property continues to offer commercial downtown business operations on site. In consultation with municipal planning services, an amendment to the Land Use Bylaw 33-2015 is required to redistrict this property to its current use, which is commercial downtown district. Strategic plan areas, a community that is educated on responsibilities and limitations of council administration. Other impacts, MGA RSA 2000 chapter M26 section 639. Summary, upon the third and final reading of this bylaw, municipal planning services will update the land use bylaw 33-2015 mapping to include all land use bylaw amendments for easy reference. Communication, communication plan, the following is an outline of the process administration will be following. The land law will and the landowner has been notified that a land use bylaw amendment is required to redistrict this property for R1 to C1. Adjacent property owners will be notified by the bylaw amendment. A public hearing will be scheduled in October with notification placed in the lot leader, posters around town, and put a notice on our town message signs. Second and third reading of the bylaw 12 2020 will be scheduled after the public hearing. Any concerns will be addressed prior to final reading of the bylaw. Bylaw 12-2020 amendment to the land use bylaw will be placed on the Town of Bruderheim website once approved by council. Residents will receive written notification of the outcome of the proposed bylaw amendment. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we're looking for a motion for this uh, land use bylaw. Would someone be willing to make that motion? Um, I can do it. Thank you, Councilor Dan. I move that Town Council give first reading to bylaw 12-2020, a bylaw to amend land use bylaw 33 2015 to redistrict P PT lot eight and lot nine, block three, plan three, 30, 3753P from R1 low density residential district to C1 downtown commercial district. Thanks for that, Councilor Dan. Um, does everybody understand where this piece of property is in relation to downtown? I was going to ask exactly where that is. Could administration point out? Uh, approximately where that is. Jerry, do you wanna take that one? Karen, is she on? Sharon, can you go tell Sherry? Yeah. Just take a minute.
part of the reason why we're asking this question from my angle is it appears to the, the shaded area as a part of the roadway in that shaded area, maybe just to try to help illustrate where the property is. I'm not sure. Hello? Hello, Sherry. Hi Hello? Hi, Sherry. Were you able Hi to there. hear the question? Hi there. Um, the, the, the map that you're looking at where you think it's uh, creating, um, marking off part of the road, that's just to really emphasize it's that piece of property that's on the corner. That is the shop that has been do that has been doing some auto repair work just down from on um, the avenue, just down from Victoria Hotel and down uh, about three doors down from George Campbell at the very corner there that used to be uh, Bryce Sam's property. Okay, does everybody from council uh, know where that is? Just want to make sure everyone's aware. Not Here. fully. Unfortunately, I'm not really seeing like I went through all these documents already and I don't have a map in, in amongst the package that we got sent. Unless I'm missing it. You don't have the map on, that was it. You should have had the map attached to your bylaw. I just went through it and it, the last page is just the signatures. So this is the same avenue as the uh, uh, railway uh, and it runs past the like the bottle depot and the hotel and the Shell gas station and it's west of Queen, Queen Street. Um, yeah. And it's at the, the corner there. It's a, a multi bay kind of building that uh, faces to the south, I believe, towards the railroad Correct. track. I think, yeah, I I think exactly it's a blue metal building. Eh? Yeah, yeah. The, they used to be an auto body shop at one point. Yeah, still, still is. I'm still using it. Okay, does, does that suffice, Dan, to help you to? Yep. Yeah, okay. I got it. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, is there any other questions on this motion from council? Or yes, why was it? Did I understand this correct? It was at one point commercial, went to residential and back. Now it's going back to commercial. Or am I reading that? I'm just trying to. Through, through Mayor Hawk to Councillor Wayne. We, because it's kind of in a residential area, somehow it got missed when they uh, redid the bylaw that in, back in 2008, it got missed on the map. It's kind of anomaly. And we noticed it when we were going through um, looking at some of the properties just recently for GIS and whatnot to get them uh, recorded on a map. Um, and we looked at it and we kind of went, gee, that's commercial. So when I did some checking back, the last two land use bylaws um, ha had actually amended the previous bylaws where this one was actually put forward as commercial and it's been commercial all these years. So we need to fix it and get it back to commercial in our land use bylaw. So it's just, an, so basically it's just an oversight that it, it missed, it got missed yes. somehow. Right. Yeah, it got missed because it's in a residential area and nobody thinks that there's a piece of commercial property in the middle of a residential area, but there is. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Any other questions from council on this motion? I have a couple of questions. So down this, down that same avenue to the west on the south side of the road is, I believe Garnet Kalen has a business there. Is that also in residential or is that covered under commercial now? That Sorry, Sherry, you're muted. It's commercial. Okay, so that one's covered already. Yeah. I was wondering, okay, thanks. And then uh, the other question is, the landowner is in agreement or he understands what's going on? He does, he's relieved that it's getting fixed because it would have been a problem when he went to sell it. Right, okay, thank you for that. And um, let's see, was there anything else that I wanted to ask about this one? Um, yeah, so we're going to have uh, opportunity for residents to hear about this. In the communication plan, are we going to include social media so that folks uh, that may not uh, catch the posters or newspaper might see it on the website? Yes, when we do land use bylaws and when we have our open houses, we do it on all, all social media as well. Okay, yeah, it just doesn't say that in the yeah. Yeah. information. So thank you for that. That's, uh, that's all the questions that I had. 
Um, is there any other questions from council on this motion? Okay, hearing none, if uh, there are anyone opposed, please say nay. And all are in favor, so no one said nay, so the motion is carried, that's 8.3. Moving on to nine reports, council committee reports. Uh, looking for a motion to receive the council committee reports as information. I'll bring that forward. Go ahead, Councillor Pat. I move that council uh, receive the council committee reports as information. Thank you for that motion. Uh, anyone opposed to that motion? Hearing none, the motion is carried. Thank you. Uh, 9.2 uh, mayor report, looking for a motion to receive the mayor report as information. I move the council receive the mayor report as information. Thank you, Councillor Dan. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion? Okay, uh, hearing none, uh, anyone opposed to that motion? Please respond. Hearing none opposed to that motion, the motion is carried then. 9.3 CAO report, looking for a motion to receive the CAO report as information. I move that council receive the chief administrative officer report as information. Thank you for that motion. Any comments, questions, or concerns from council on that motion? I was just wondering if we're having issues still with people putting stuff down the drain when they shouldn't. As the wipes in that. Mr. Mayor, yes, it's a constant challenge to educate. So, yes. Well, okay. I think uh, I noticed in stores now they're not marketing things as flushable wipes now. I think the um, business community is doing a better job of educating people that uh, not to flush things down. Yeah. The drain. yeah. Good. So yeah, just telling people and uh, you know, wipes, Lysol wipes are not flushable wipes, and that's what we're seeing in the drains, right? So. Right. Yeah. Okay. But All what, right. Thanks, Patty. Thank you. Any other questions for Patty? Yeah. In regards to the same going on what Pat Lee was saying, um, it's a significant cost calling out every time. What's the cost, or is it possible to put some kind of a, I don't know, like a Garbrator, for lack of a better term, in there to chew everything up before it goes through. Is there any way to do something like that? In uh, people's yeah. houses? Sorry? At the, in my at the Sorry? Like they go down into the sewer and then you're saying before they go through the lift station, the pump station? Yeah. Is there a way to get some kind of a, a, a I'm going to call it a garbrator, for lack of a better term, but something that just chews everything up so it doesn't get plugged up in there? Yes. And uh, your public work, that is a, a macer, macerator. <laughs> so yes, I'll get some costing for that. Sorry? I'll get some costing for that, get back to council. Okay, and when you get costing, is it possible to bring back the costing and what it's costed already to clean out every time? So we kind of kind of have a comparison, okay. please. Thank you. Uh, uh, the director of public works just advised me it's 92,000 for that pump or that carburetor. And, and what have we paid? I guess I, I'd like to see what we've paid so far. And if and this is going to be an ongoing thing, is it worthwhile biting a bullet and putting that in? It's costing about two to $3,000 to uh, pump it out every time. So um, that would be 180 pumps or so, right? Yeah, I'll have to do some, I'll do some math for council. I'll email that out, that answer. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any other questions for CAO Path in the uh, CAO report? Um, I, I do have a couple questions, if I may, if no one else has any questions. Um, in the section under roads, it talks about O'Hanlon commencing the 2020 sidewalk replacement program. And it mentions that sidewalks were evaluated throughout the town with the rating system, the tripping hazards and crumbling surfaces were given highest priority. Um, we, we've uh, repaired more than just sidewalks this time around, and I'm just wondering how those other repairs ranked versus uh, the sidewalks, like how was that evaluation done? 
Are you talking about the gazebo, Mr. Ryan? Uh, that, and I believe there was something done in the shop as well. The public workshop? Yeah. Uh, cracking the floor or something? No, nope, nothing in the shop. Um, the gazebo was a tripping hazard. I'm sure you saw that rubber was all lifting. And we had a number of complaints. Uh, it was a tripping hazard for a number of people using our gazebo. That rubber did not work in the gazebo where we were shoveling all winter long. And uh, right, it's just, it doesn't take the equipment going over top of it or the, uh, it was a very thin layer. That was the first time we'd ever used that recycled rubber. So we'd had a number of near misses there. That's why that rose to the top with tripping hazard. Yep, I was just wondering how it was evaluated. Thank you. Um, and then the, my next question is under the general section on page two. I noticed that it says the infinity building has a roof leak. Is this a substantial leak that would be very expensive for any ideas? Uh, initial costs will be uh, under $10,000. So uh, initial estimates is six to 10,000. Of course, um, once they get into the membrane and see, uh, we had a significant leak there in the kitchen. Okay. And uh, imagine that money will be probably coming from reserves to pay for that. Mr. Mayor, we're, uh, we're hoping that we could find other options within the operating budget this year. Okay. And then uh, looks like a good news story. It says 57 locates were received for town utilities. Is that outside of the concrete work or yeah, that where are the bulk? That would be for town owned water lines. Oh, uh, okay. So that, that was initiated by the town then, not, not by people working on their homes? That's by people working on their homes, Mr. Mayor, or industry partners that are doing work. Okay. In. Great. Thank you very much. That's all the questions that I had on the report. Is there any other questions from Council on the CAO report? Um, I just have one question under your water sewer stuff. Uh, that Neptune program, what's, what's that? Can you shed any light on that? Absolutely. So when we read uh, meters right now, as you know, we're trying to get remotely where we just drive by and it gathers information, but um, only half our community is done. But when we gather all that, it's a meter that actually gathers your readings, whether drive by or walking up and scanning. Um, and then that information is brought back to the office. And then that merges with each individual resident's um, utility account and it downloads onto the system. And then that's how we generate your utility bills that you get every month. And we've been living on borrowed time since I've been here. I'm sure council that are on their second term know that um, five years ago, they quit supporting that software. They went to whole new systems. So we're at the end of our life. They won't actually support it at all. We had it in the budget to replace it. So that's, uh, it's just an upgrade software upgrade basically that, uh, but any, as any upgrade goes, there's gonna be hiccups when tying in with our billing system because they're two totally different softwares, right? And in gotcha. the We'll get us a new meter and um, that meters the meter that we have right now fails on a regular basis because it's so old and you can't even get parts for it so we're excited to do the upgrade for sure great hopefully that uh, software upgrade is good for 25 years <laughs> <laughs> i doubt that mr mayor in this day area of technology but <laughs> with that well, um we will come and support um We'll have to pay some more for that program than any other programs we have, right? An annual fee, so. Right. Okay. Uh, any uh, other questions for CAO, Pat? Thank you for that question, Councillor Dan. I, Hearing I'm, none. Oh, for, Councillor Wayne. I have questions are not anything to do with her report, but they're just um, things that have come up that I should have asked earlier. Since we're near the end of the uh, meeting, is it okay if I bring up a couple items? Uh, it's okay by me. Go ahead, Councillor Wayne, if uh, Council doesn't object. They're just quick ones. Um, is it possible to follow up with Fortis and to ensure that when they turn power up, they contact residents in a timely fashion? There were some power outages here yesterday for about two and a half hours and nobody was notified. And it was a full street and people are working from home and they need to notify their employers if they don't have power if they're working from home. And when they get up and go to use power and it's not there, they're, well, what's going on? Uh, the only reason I found out about this is because Ford has knocked on my door asking to move my vehicle <laughs> so they can get to the box. So can we do a follow-up with them and stress the importance of letting residents know? Um, uh, things like 
security and alarm systems for houses. People are, are rely on these things, but if there's no power, they don't got it. So they need to make alternate arrangements. So if we could do that, um, that'd be great. Um, another thing, is it possible to put a sign um, at the sanitation cleaning area by the campground saying, do not drink water? I know it says non-potable, but kids still use it because they're not sure what potable means. So can we put a sign just saying, please don't drink water? It is not, I don't know, something that kids will understand. That's all, thank you. Thank you for those questions, Councillor Wayne. Much appreciated. CAO Pat, any your response there? No, that's an excellent point. I should have thought about that. A child wouldn't know what potable water means. Because they go there constantly from the skate park when it's hotter, especially, and like, no, don't drink that. <laughs> but that's a good I point. mean, I drank it when I was a kid. I turned out just fine. <laughs> 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 and with that ringing endorsement we move on to the next item <laughs> so um any uh any council opposed to the cao uh, officer report as information motion please say nay if you are if not then uh, i assume the motion is carried and we move forward on to 10 correspondence and information items uh, only have one item. Um, did all of council get a copy of this letter dated August 12th from Lamont County? Mr. Mayor, are you referring to the recreation grant funding? No, this one is in regards to an application for a development permit. Mr. Mayor, I believe so, yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure that. So our, our, when is our council going to discern and talk about this because they're looking for a response by September 2nd. So Mr. Mayor, if Council could send any concerns back to Sherry through email, that would be great. Okay. That, I just wanted to make sure all of Council is aware of that. So Councillor George will be notified about that. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Great. Thank you. That's the, the only thing that I had for correspondence. So uh, we have a closed session, so we'll be looking for a motion to go out of the uh, open session. Does anyone need a comfort break first? Okay, uh, I'd like to entertain a motion from council to end the open session for now. All right, so move with the end open session. Thank you. Any comments, questions, or concerns with that motion from council? And if anyone's opposed, say nay. And the motion's carried. Thank you. And so 